This is the Nazgul 5 4S, a pre-assembled FPV drone that has been getting quite a lot of attention recently. Now, it comes at a pretty affordable price tag, starting at around $184, which makes it a pretty attractive purchase for somebody trying to get into the hobby. Now, I've had this drone for a couple weeks now, so today I wanted to share some of my thoughts, go through the steps of getting it set up, and talk about whether or not I actually think this is a good purchase for a first time buyer to make, and talk about whether or not I think it's actually worth the hype. So the Nazgul 5 is a bind and fly quad, which means it comes completely pre-built and almost ready to fly straight out of the box. If you buy it on a website like Banggood, you can choose to have it come with a receiver pre-installed, or you can choose to have it come without it and install your own. Then when you take it out of the box, all you have to do is pair it with your radio transmitter and you're good to go. Now, one of the main things that make the Nazgul 5 so appealing is the value that you get. Coming in at $204 with an RXSR receiver pre-installed, or $184 without it, it seems pretty affordable. What's really amazing though, is that that price is actually cheaper than what you would pay if you were to buy all of these parts separately and build it yourself. So by buying it pre-assembled, uh, pre you're actually saving money, effort, and time. How they do that, I have no idea. Now, if I was to compare that value to my first FPV purchase, the RS X220, uh, the price difference is pretty minimal. The RS currently comes in at $169, is a much older quad, the components definitely aren't as good, and as I mentioned in a previous review, it has a few flaws. Even by just quickly picking both of them up, I can instantly notice a difference in quality. The organization of the components of the Nazgul 5 and the neatness of the solder joints just show an attention to detail. And the quad also comes with a variety of 3D printed accessories for extra protection of the most vulnerable areas. It's a nice touch. It's kind of like buying a cell phone and having a free phone case included. Also, the Nazgul 5 just feels more premium. The motors spin very fluidly and the frame feels very rigid and well built. Uh, the frame's also a little bit thicker, which feels like it could definitely take a beating, uh, which is nice for somebody just starting out. When it comes to accessories, you get two battery straps, eight propellers, a ton of extra screws, which is really nice, a controller for the camera, a battery pad, and it's supposed to come with a VTX antenna as well. Now, my package unfortunately came with the VTX antenna missing, and I contacted the company, they were very nice, and they were willing to compensate me for the missing part. However, I didn't really want to go through the trouble, so I ended up just installing my own, and I went with the Lumineer AX2. Now, I also believe the VTX antenna would have come packaged with some receiver antenna covers, but I just ended up making my own DIY version using some zip ties strapped to the back there and some heat shrink tubing. And honestly, I think they look pretty cool and they seem to work better than the, than the real thing. Uh, every time I use um, like the official antenna covers, I usually end up breaking them. Uh, these ones I've had for about a month and they're still holding up strong. So honestly, if you guys are interested, it's definitely an option. The GoPro mount that I've installed is unfortunately sold separately, and it's kind of pricey costing $20, but it's made out of this really nice plastic that makes it incredibly durable. Uh, and it also comes with a complimentary ND filter for your GoPro, which makes getting some nice footage on those uh, really sunny days that much easier. And it's a nice touch. Now, if I was to recommend some extra accessories for somebody just starting out and buying this as their first FPV purchase, uh, I would definitely say get some extra batteries, uh, get a ton of extra props. You're gonna go through these quite a lot. Uh, they're very cheap, so might as well have some on hand. Uh, get some zip ties. Zip tie literally everything together. Um, it'll prevent you from, from breaking things and it'll make your equipment last a lot longer. Um, I would also say, Get some antenna covers. Uh, you're gonna go through these pretty quickly. The standard placement of the antennas 
kind of make them susceptible to, uh, to breaking when you crash, um, unless you choose to mount them somewhere else or come up with a DIY version like I did. Um, I would also say get a grippier battery pad. Uh, the one that comes with it isn't really that great. Um, I had a lot of Velcro lying around, so I ended up just putting Velcro on all my batteries and it seems to work pretty well. Um, finally, I don't know if this is just me, but I seem to go through a lot of receiver antennas. Um, so even just buying a pack, a pack of these, let's see if I can uh, focus on these. Even just buying a pack of these is super cheap and uh, it'll prevent you from buying a whole new receiver. Uh, so I think they're good to have. Also, if you really want to be safe, buying a couple extra spare motors is, is not a bad call as well. So, when you take your Nazgul 5 out of the box, it's probably a good idea to first bind it to your radio transmitter. Now, the XM Plus and the RXSR receivers that you can choose to have come pre-installed into your Nazgul, they are both made by a company called FR Sky who also make the Tyrannus line of radios. Now this is probably the most commonly used brand of radio transmitters in the FPV hobby, and you can feel confident that no matter what model you buy, um, as long as it's one of the newer models, it will work with both of these receivers. Uh, my model is the QX7. It's probably uh, around like a mid-ranged model, but I highly recommend it, I love it. Um, I will probably never have to upgrade this radio. Um, however, if you choose to buy a different radio, buy a different brand, uh, feel free. Just make sure that it works with one of these two receivers. And if not, you're gonna have to purchase it without a receiver and install your own. So to bind the two together, first choose the profile you wanna bind to or make a new profile for your receiver on your radio. In your profile settings, make sure it's set to D16 and put it in bind mode. On your quad, find the receiver, and hold down the bind button while plugging in your battery. This will start the receiver in bind mode. A red blinking light means the binding was successful. Then turn bind mode on your radio off, unplug the battery from the quad, and plug it back in normally. If you see a solid green light, you're all good. When attaching the propellers on the Nazgul 5, it's important to make sure that all of them are rotating outward. You will get two props that are angled to spin left and two that are meant to spin right. Their placement matters. Then you should attach your video transmitter antenna. Make sure to use a wrench to tighten it but make sure you aren't spinning the nut on the inside as well. To protect your receiver antennas, you can use the 3D printed antenna holes to attach a cover. You can also use a similar DIY solution, or Joshua Bardwell recommends mounting antennas on the back arms, sticking out like this. Wherever you choose to mount them is up to you. They should, however, be at a 90 degree angle from each other for the best reception. So now the most important question is, how does it fly? Well, here's some GoPro footage from my first day taking it outside. So after getting it up in the air, uh, I gotta admit that flying the Nazgul 5 felt very intuitive. Um, before I ever bought an FPV drone, I spent a lot of hours practicing within a simulator and the 4S version of the Nazgul I feel like felt like a very good transition from simulator to the real thing. Um, <laughs> I tried to do a flip there. Uh, keep in mind this is probably my second time ever flying a full-time drone in this video. Um, but the 4S, the 4S version of the Nazgul, it was great because it didn't feel under or overpowered. Uh, but it really did feel just right. Um, it handled well, it, it was easy to recover if I made a mistake. There I was trying my first power loop, which didn't work out very well. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed it. Uh, with the GoPro, um, it's it flew pretty well. Without the GoPro, it feels incredibly light. Um, 
which makes it incredibly um, quick to maneuver. Uh, the only the only difference is that without the GoPro, it's it's much more affected by by wind. Um, but either way, the the performance was was honestly great, and and I had a blast in this park. And I think I crash it right here. Boom. So I actually really, really enjoyed flying the Nazgul 5, way more than my other quad. I definitely understand why so many people were excited for it and why so many people recommend this product. I definitely don't think at the moment you can get any more value at this price range. And I definitely think the hype is worth it. Honestly, there is one other reason why this product stood out to me and why I would recommend it to anybody trying to make their first FPV purchase. And that's solely because of the popularity of it. FPV is such a complicated hobby and the learning that you have to do was way more than I ever imagined. And honestly, sometimes just finding the resources can be very difficult. And this quad being very popular right now and a lot of people posting videos and, and posts online, um, having those resources makes learning about your particular model that much easier and it'll end up making the, the hobby that much funner for you, or that much more fun for you. Funner's not a word. So do I recommend it? Absolutely. The Nazgul 5 is a wonderful product, and I hope that if you guys do choose to go with it, uh, you guys are as satisfied as I was with mine. So thank you for watching this review. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did and want other FPV videos like this one, please like and subscribe, or don't. It's up to you. Uh, if you guys have any questions, comments, or criticisms, please write them in the comment section below. I will make sure to answer every single one of them. I really do appreciate you guys watching these videos, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.